Hey everyone, I'm Rob. It's Sunday today, so that means it's time to sit down and chat all things chat, GBT, and generative AI and catch up with the news in the week. And this week, it's all about ChatGPT Vision or ChatGPT V, where you can take photos and upload photos, images, and have ChatGPT analyze what's going on in this image. We've seen a lot of use cases this week. It's really exciting. So I want to talk to you about how to use it, how to access it, and more importantly, the use cases that we can get from it. So let's go and grab your coffee and enjoy. So how do you get access to ChatGPT Vision? Good question. Well, you only have access if you are a ChatGPT Plus subscriber. So for the regular users, unfortunately, you don't have access to it. But if you have ChatGPT 4 and have the paid subscription, then you see this nifty difty icon right by the chat. And here, new chat with images, fantastic. So let's go ahead and close that. Also really cool, if you are on the mobile version, you will see an icon to take a picture and upload it directly from your phone's camera. Now, the reason why this is so exciting is because there's so much capability possible capability possibility. There's so many possibilities with this and so many capabilities that we can unlock and explore. And for uh, this video, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go to like the very tip of the iceberg, guys. I'm going to talk about um, use cases for, yeah, let's do for people in the corporate world. Let's do students and researchers. Let's do creatives. Um, and let's do some just some fun everyday life stuff slash like uh, let's take a look also to about health. Let's get right into the use cases. So for the first business use case, it's let's talk about customer journey map. So I've uploaded a customer journey map that somebody has made shopping for a new car. And I just put in the prompt, what are some customer interactions, touch points, experience enha enhancements or design improvements that I haven't considered? And then if you look at it, it's like this, I, I'm just really impressed by the capability of it being able to read an image and now suggest improvements like, come on. So uh, again, this is something uh, for soundboarding, for ideating, like amazing. Next up, of course, it can read financial graphs. So here we have an example of Apple revenue by region. And I put in the prompt, can you discuss their profitability by region and where there could be inf uh, further investment areas? And so, of course, it gives a breakdown. And I feel this prompt maybe took like one minute to run. Um, so again, some really cool insights. Next, let's look into analyzing a KPI dashboard. So here again is another example of an employee engagement retention KPI dashboard. And the prompt I said was, hey, I need to create a communication for senior leadership. Can you provide key takeaways and uh, yeah, and outcomes um, in bullet points? And yeah, again, within minutes, it said, duck, 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 duck. like it's, come on, come on. Like, ha, literally, you could just like, copy and paste this. Um, the thing, of course, of course, of course, is that please use your own enterprise version uh, when this functionality is available for you within a closed enterprise setting because of compliance reasons. Please, please, please don't ever upload confidential information into ChatGPT from your company uh, or for yourself. And for this prompt, I uploaded an example of a Salesforce dashboard and said, hey, I, uh, the SVP wants me to present the Salesforce dashboard at a next meeting. Please break this down into insights that I can put into four slides. So uh, you can see how it works. I just uploaded from here. Then you will see the image itself. And then ChatGP just starts a motoring on. Now, there's so much more capabilities that we haven't even tapped into. I think also, too, for large organizations that create their own AI tools, which have some of these functionalities and features. Imagine if you're a Unilever or a Nestle and you have an application that has functionality now for customers to take photos of the ingredients in their fridge and then it spits out a recipe with like a nice Nestle or Unilever product that they'll need. Um, there's just, ah, there's just so much like possibility. It's like, it's, yeah, it's so, it's like, there's so much to explore here. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, j just shout out, if you work for Nestle or Unilever and you want me to come speak or ideate, like doors open, you know, just saying. Now, it's not only about financial statements, Salesforce dashboards, etc. A lot of us that work within the corporate world have a touch of creativity, have a touch of design that is needed, whether or not we're actual designers or just work in that space. So uh, another thing, of course, another use case is the design element. So for example, if there are internal logos, project logo, logos, etc., cetera, um, you can get feedback on it. So I uploaded the London Olympics uh, logo because it's, I don't know, I don't really find it that great. Sorry if you're from there or you designed it or you really love it, but it's something I'm like, meh. Um, so I would just, you know, uploaded the photo and said, from a design perspective, how could I improve this logo? And then it talks about indeed, like, you know, perhaps simplifying the abstract, abstract shapes, um, 
figuring out different typography for London to make it a little bit more prominent, color consistency, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it gives you a lot of really good feedback and elements. Now, I think some other more generic use cases that you could use if you're in a design is, for example, taking photos of a, of a typeset that you really like and say, you know, what font is this? There's so many more use cases as well from a business context, like especially around design. For example, if you are not proficient in designing good slides, uh, taking the screenshot and asking for design help. Um, also too, if you have a lot of information on your slides, um, taking a screenshot of that and asking, how can I simplify this into four bullet points and get my message across? Uh, there's so many other things as well, like process flows, identifying bottlenecks, um, the sky's the limit here and we won't touch on it because I feel like then this video would be like 60 minutes long, if not longer. And yeah, we're not going there today, but uh, let's, let's talk about how, if you're a student, you can use this as well. So when I was studying my master's, one of the things I think that I needed to practice, practice, practice was to understand tables and it didn't come easy sometimes. Um, so I think one of the things that you could use ChatGPT vision for is to upload very complex, for example, like a regression table and just saying, can you please explain this a little bit? So, you know, even just writing a basic prompt, how can I interpret this table? What are the significant findings? And boom, here we go. It explains a lot about the table. And then it talks about, uh, in the end, the summary of the significant findings. Like, come on. Oh my gosh. And again, if you start to go into structural equation modeling, you can upload models. You could even honestly take a picture with the with your smartphone in the ChatGPT uh, mobile app, uh, upload it and say, hey, can you help interpret this for me? So again, um, this is an example of a structural equation model. What are the key findings from this? And then it, like it even talks about um, self-efficacy and what that means. So yeah, I think for students and researchers, that's one of the big things like that you can literally take your your the app and take a picture of the things and get more explanation as to what this is, what the, the coefficients are, um, what the constructs mean. I would even say, honestly, as a teacher, the times that I did give feedback with like written notes, uh, I had sometimes the like, yeah, your handwriting is not entirely clear. So I feel like that's another use case for students to like take a picture of their, their professor's handwritten note on their paper and being like, I can't really understand this. Can you help? And lastly, let's talk about some personal use cases. Now, it's not going to be relevant for everyone, and there's so much capability and possibility in this. Um, so I feel like, again, this is just like the very teeniest tip of the iceberg. Okay, the first is a bit of a jump scare. It does feature a uh, bit of rosacea on my skin. And so that's exactly what I did. I took a picture of a mark on my skin, and I said, eh, this is a weird mark on my skin. It's not itchy or painful. What could it possibly be? And yes, I went to the doctor. The doctor mentioned that it is rosacea, so we're all good. And uh, um, yeah, it's interesting because the, the first prompt that I said for it, it said like, okay, it appears to be a patch of the skin with slight decoloration. However, I'm not a doctor, so I can't really do this. And so I, uh, came up with a further, you know, a, an updated prompt being like, if you were to guess what were some of the things that it could be, and then it came up with this list. And number four is actually the correct one that a doctor diagnosed me with. Now, why I think that this is, this is such a powerful thing to have is that there are many people in this world that don't have access uh, easy access to medical care. Um, you know, we know in Canada there's long wait times. Sometimes in the Netherlands that's true as well. So it's, I feel like another tool to kind of give people more agency when it comes to their medical health. Again, it doesn't replace a doctor at all or a nurse, um, but I feel like it does give more agency to people. And again, I feel like the, the implications of this, like, come on. So yeah, really, really cool uh, to potentially empower patients for some of their own healthcare. And again, I'm like, Philips, I know that you are hardlining now into like being a medical company. Again, feel free to invite me for a chat and how we can turn this into an application. Just saying, just saying. Okay, now the other use cases are a, a lot more mundane than this. Um, one of them is like real life because I have a plant. I don't know what it is. Some of its leaves are turning yellow. And so I uploaded a picture of this plant and <laughs> just kind of hilarious. I learned today that it is toxic if ingested. So I should keep it out, out of reach from pets and children. Okay. Today I learned. Uh, and then I asked why it has yellow leaves. And this is interesting, especially because there has been a lot of temperature stress in Amsterdam. It's been like very warm. Now it's very cold. Um, oh, but maybe my baby is just aging. Could be. 
So the other prompt that I asked was for interior decorating help. Uh, you can see I have been thinking about putting art on this wall and replacing the sad lamp um, for many moons. And so I said, just I'm thinking of putting art on this wall would, would be a good piece to put there. And it was so cool because it, you know, it said like you, your space has a contemporary and minimalist vibe with greenery adding a touch of nature that here are some art suggestions. So super cool. I feel like this gives me some possibilities and some things to think about like hello pinterest board okay and lastly this is a bit of, actually this is fun and i feel like i know that uh, a large percentage of men are actually colorblind and some do need help picking out outfits so i thought you could just let ChatGPT vision help with your outfits so i, I took a picture of a houndstooth t-shirt and then my nike jogging pants and said does this outfit look good and it was so funny it was just like you know if this is the style that you're going for it can work but it's like uh, the style does clash and then of course like could i wear this to an to the office and it's like uh well let me think about that so i definitely think it could be relevant for people that are just entering the workforce um people that could be colorblind or people that just might need a bit of inspiration or help um also too i could imagine uploading a photo of yourself and asking for like hairstyle ideas whether or not dyeing your hair a certain color could work well um, there's so many capabilities and functions with this. I'm a little bit resident, I'm sorry, reticent though to upload a picture of my face just because, although it's like very tempting to do the, hey, like how symmetrical is my face? Do I fall? Like how beautiful am I on the scale from one to 10? But I mean, narcissism aside, I, I, I really don't think that there's a point of going there. Um, yeah, as well as uploading your face into this because you know, you never know. Anywho, thanks so much for watching. Uh, yeah, in my life this week, yeah, just, it's Spooktober, so I've been watching a lot of horror movies, and yeah, the person that I've been seeing got tickets for us today for Jeff Goldblum in um, a really nice theater in Amsterdam, so I'm like, I feel like maybe that's when I'll use ChatGPT Vision to be like, uh, I, how can I, like, look, like, trendy and cool and, like, sexy and, like, smart, because I feel like the location that it is is, is very, like, I don't know, kind of like upper crust Amsterdam. And I'm just, you know, a Canadian farmer. Anywho, uh, I'll stop blathering. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to go ahead and like and subscribe, that would mean a lot. Um, and yeah, have a wonderful week ahead. Catch you next time. Bye.